after having talked about my university experience so much on this channel, I know that you'll all know that academia is like my one true love. That love I have comes completely together in possession. Possession is, and I'm going to try and get this right, a piece of historiographic metafiction. It is ultimately a literary detective story and a love story. It centres around Roland, a scholar in the London Library, which is a private library, finding a letter which seems to be completely undisturbed. And it's a letter by a great Victorian poet, a fictional poet, Randolph Henry Ashe. This letter brings into question everything Roland knows about Randolph. The letter begins a detective story. It begins trailing through letters and poetry with a more of a scholar to find out who really is Randolph Henry Ashe and his relationship with a female poet, Christabel Lamotte, who he was writing to, finding out what their relationship was and discovering their love story. What I love about this novel is that you are a detective with the academics. You are a scholar of Randolph Henry Ashe and Christabel Lamotte. There is letters and poetry and um, it's a complete alternative history, which is something I really, really love. And postmodern literature is like my favourite type of literature. You find yourself annotating, or if you're me, you find yourself annotating the letters and the poems and the biographies and the critical studies that um, A.S. Bart kind of weaves in between the narrative. And you pick up on the metaphors and you can link, you know, these two poets to each other. It's also this fascinating almost study of women as writers and kind of the female craft, especially in the Victorian age. Because Christabel Lamotte has been seen as a fairy poet um, and is kind of, you know, forgotten. And unfortunately that's the story of so many uh, female writers throughout history. And... Not only does A.S. Byatt kind of give a voice to Christabel, but she also examines her fairy tales and the depth that's in them. And you also see how um, female writing in the Victorian ages kind of changes. It starts with fairy tales and it moves on to biographies. And you then also get the interactions of the modern day scholars, like a feminist scholar and queer theory. So you get almost this whole history of female writers and academic study and it's basically a satire as well on academia and on academia practices. This letter um, by Randolph Henry Ashe, you know, was a private letter and wasn't meant to be seen by anybody and there's lots of comments and you have the whole academic community kind of fighting over trying to figure out what Roland's doing with Maud and, you know, wanting to be the person to discover it, wanting to be the academic to bring out this history. There's certain possessiveness over, you know, being that person who has a specialist in a particular writer or is the foremost academic in that subject. So much in this novel you have academics from various parts of the world and the idea of well, who is going to have his work, Randolph Henry Ashes and, and Christabel Lamotte's work, where are they going to be? They no longer belong to them, even though they are the most intimate parts of them. And alongside that, you also obviously have the possession of, of, of love, of, you know, independence and dependence within relationships. When you are really studying, or really, not even studying, when you're just really invested in something, you feel like they're yours. And I have this with Virginia Woolf, like, big time. And I always have to remind myself that, like, Virginia Woolf is, like, a lot of people's favourite writers. But in my mind, like, no one, no one likes Virginia Woolf. <laughs> um, but I have Virginia Woolf's manuscripts, her notebooks, um, a printed copy, obviously, I haven't stolen them. And it's the intimacy of seeing her mistakes and the stuff that she's etched out and the little calculations she'd done or little notes to herself. They are so intimate because they are just hers. And... You know, Mrs. Dalloway was meant to be published and it was meant for an audience and to be read by readers, but these bits weren't. And I feel exactly the same way about letters and in particular love letters because what is more intimate than a declaration of love? Possession deals with it really beautifully and brings up these questions and challenges how you think of things. And so, as always, I always want to go to the places 
that have inspired writers. It's often why, like, when I go on holiday, I often go on holiday to places where people have written certain books. Um, so today I wanted to go to the British Library because the British Library is basically entire building dedicated to possession, right? So it's a fascinating building, but it's also just a building that is dedicated to learning and curiosity, which is basically why I love possession. <laughs> When I was kind of walking around and looking at things, I suddenly realised actually how much possession kind of does come into, like, things like the British Library. I'm going to see if I can actually explain this, because when I was looking around, I went straight to the literature section, because it's kind of what I'm there for, and I'd never seen, I don't think, like, Sylvia Plath's handwriting in real life. And they had like a letter there and you could kind of get a sense of her, like sense of humour as well. And although you can definitely kind of get that from her writing, I, I just loved staring at it and realising like this is her handwriting. And then I had this really weird thought, and in fact on all of these, looking at the Charlotte Bronte um, and Ted Hughes and like all of these really, really great writers, I was like, hell, this is like their handwriting. <laughs> And then I felt like really privileged to have been able to see their handwriting. And I know that, you know, you probably can't tell that much from handwriting, but I had that feeling of being closer to them and sharing that intimacy because there's probably only a very few people uh, in your life that you probably recognise their handwriting. Like my dad has very distinctive handwriting. So every time I know, like there's a letter from him or a card, I know exactly who it is. And there are probably only like five people who I really recognise the handwriting of, especially because you people don't tend to write as many letters now and you'll get the occasional card and it tends to be like close family, or it is for me at least. And I realised, well, now I recognise like Sylvia Plath's handwriting and Virginia Woolf. And I was like, this makes me feel even closer. And then I had another thought, which was like, because obviously I'm privileged enough, and I know privilege has so much to do with this, privileged to have the access to, you know, institutions such as the British Library and, you know, being able to live in London. Also, even though this video has, like, nothing to do with Virginia Woolf, or it didn't at the start of it, it suddenly became swiftly back to Virginia Woolf for me. Obviously, Virginia Woolf talks about the British Library, um, but I saw her manuscript again um, in the flesh, um, a bit behind, like, a big, like glass screen. When we were in the main gift shop um, I picked up another Virginia Woolf rela related thing um, and it is a print again I just realised another map. Um, at the moment in our flat we have like a, a whole map wall because I'm that obsessed um, but this one is a map of the Bloomsbury group in London. Picking up this poster and then walking around Bloomsbury I realised that whenever I am walking around Bloomsbury it's always in relation to the Bloomsbury group and whenever I am in Gordon Square or when I'm walking around, I feel really connected to Virginia Woolf because this is her environment. I feel this need to try and be as close as possible to these writers. And it's in the same way that, you know, going to British Library and seeing Sylvia Plath's handwriting, you suddenly feel closer because they're not just, you know, it's not just a published book that has, you know, gone through an editor and has seen by lots of different people. It's actually something that 
in flesh has only been seen I mean to be fair it's in the British Library so it's been seen by like millions of people but because there's something about it it still feels really intimate and now there is more Virginia Woolf this is not how I thought this video was would turn out at all like years ago I did a video about books and I will put a card to it now and a link in the description um, because it basically discussed kind of me getting a big parcel of second hand books and they were annotated and I was able to almost trace the owner of these books and actually see what kind of the books meant to her by her annotations and where she was in her life. In the same way this person's annotated quite a lot of this book, they haven't literally left notes um, but they've definitely underlined things. I'm intrigued to see like what they have underlined. Linking this book back to where we began at the beginning of this video, you know, possession is all about tracing down these people and trying to understand more about literature and ultimately actually, you know, your life. The book isn't just about the love story between the, these poets or about their journey to find each other and to be together, but it's also as much about the journey of the scholars in not only their academic research in the novel but also in understanding themselves and each other. It's really now holding this book, the fact that I now possess this book but it's also been owned by someone else and it's been interpreted by someone else and what does it mean that now I have someone's copy with their annotations and the meanings that they attach to them and now I will read it differently the sense of ownership over different writers like I feel like I to a certain extent almost own Virginia Woolf because she's my favourite writer and, and that's personally for me I'm not saying that I like have an authority over her but I think when you do have a favourite book you sometimes do almost state a, a kind of authority but ultimately this is someone else's book and potentially it was their favourite book as well. What it makes me realise though is how that in my annotations of this book one day you know this book won't always be mine it'll be someone else's and and not that I'm going to become like you know a great poet like Randolph Henry Ashe um I always think of passing my books down and my annotations and who will read them and in fact this is basically a vid the video I filmed when I was still at university um and actually even though I look back at the video and I think oh my god I look so different and so young the sentiment of it I still feel is, is really relevant. I'm going to wrap this video up here because I don't know what it's become um, and if I carry on it will just go in a completely different direction because it's already completely changed. Possession is a intricate tapestry of a novel shall we say. It is beautiful and satirical at times and captures something so magical about reading. It is about the pleasure of reading and discovery and falling in love with both characters, writers and other people. Thank you for watching this video. If you like seeing my content, I have created a coffee account, which is basically an online tip jar and you can basically tip like free quid and it's one off as well. So you don't have to do all the time. There's no subscription or anything like that. And it will just go to help me create more content.